Nice to see you, everybody. How are you doing so far? Good. Are we good? So that was a little wimpy. How are you doing so far? Good. Okay, that's better. So today is going to be a party. I don't know if you have sensed that or felt that or anything, uh, but today we're going to have stories of uh, our youth at Hume Lake. We're going to get into Psalm 100, which is all about joyful praise and enjoying who the Lord is for his goodness and his greatness. And if that wasn't enough, no, I'm not going to say thunderstorms. We're, we're going to have baptisms at the end. So today is going to, you're, you're very smart to be here today, I just got to say. Uh, but I have to tell you something funny about this storm coming because I go fishing once a year on an overnight trip out of, you know, off the coast to catch big tuna and et cetera. And that's kind of my thing. And so this year, we were smart enough to plan it for tonight. And so we're, we were supposed to go out of San Diego tonight at 7 p.m., which is like the eye of the storm. If you notice, like, that's not really when... You... So I was looking at the weather report just for laughs, and I've never seen a weather report as bad as what's going to be tonight and tomorrow. So Kevin is laughing and smiling along with me. So anyway, we won't be going, and uh, we'll be staying safe. So there you go. Uh, but um, we're going to get into Psalm 100 first before we hear from our youth. And uh, I want to ask you to stand up with me as I read Psalm 100 for us. And, uh, and just picture this 3,000 years ago in the temple. The worship leader, David or Asaph or somebody else, is up in front of the people and helping the people get ready to praise the Lord, they would sing or say this song as a call to worship. So just picture that. You're in the crowd. Somebody's up in front getting ready to go nuts in God's presence, okay? Shout for joy, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It's he who made us, and we are his. We're his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. You just walked into the temple area through those gates. Enter his courts with praise. You're standing there. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues how long? through all generations. Amen. You can be seated. So verse 1 has this big word, shout. So I got to ask you a question. How is your enthusiasm for God lately? And there we go. Okay. Now I want to I just look around and, you know, I, I've seen you guys over the last month or two. Some of you are more enthusiastic than others, but there's still time. You're still on planet Earth. You still have a little bit more time left to say, you know, my enthusiasm, eh. you know, when, when it says shout in the Bible, do you know what the Hebrew word means? It means shout. <laughs> yeah, so very rarely in American Christianity do we shout, you know, unless you're in a super Pentecostal church and that's kind of how you were raised. But it's interesting how many times that idea is in the Psalms, how many times that idea is in Scripture, that there are times when... We need to shout in praise of the Lord and, and let it bubble up and, and come out. So why should you shout, for the, shout to the Lord? Why? Why? Well, I'm glad you asked because the psalm actually gives us five reasons why to shout to the Lord. One, he made you. Okay? You might not like you, but he does. Okay? He doesn't make junk. Okay? And, and then the next reason is you are his. And, and then, here's one, he's good. So the Psalms talk a lot about his goodness. And then here's one, another one, he loves you. Okay, so he made you, you're his, he's good, he loves you. And the last one, he will always be faithful to you. Not just to everybody else, not, not to those who have it all together, those who, no. To you, he will be faithful, that's his promise. Those are some pretty darn good reasons to shout to the Lord. And, and for me, I'm a little bit reserved, but, but I'm becoming less reserved. 
And, and so that there's a song I remember that, that said, I will become even more undignified than this. I, I love that. So I, that's my goal. I want to become less and less dignified as I get older. Um, so then it says, the whole earth shout to the Lord. And, and so what does that mean? That means every generation, every people group. And it doesn't even just mean people. It means creation itself. It means everything. And, and that's interesting, too. If you look in the Psalms, you see lots of pictures of trees and birds and creation itself, the ocean roaring to praise the Lord. That's pretty cool. Verse 2 says, worship the Lord with gladness. And I couldn't help but I had a funny picture in my mind of glad rap. Did you grow up with that? So, so I feel like w- when we worship the Lord, it should be wrapped in gladness. So whenever you see your saran wrap or your glad wrap, you'll think, oh yeah. So wrap your worship in glad. Hey, Lord, I love you. Thank you for your faithfulness to me when, when you come before him. I feel like some people look so sad when they worship God. And I, I was going to have John share about this because he gets to watch your faces. You know, when you're singing, you know, a song that is like, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, right? And so I was thinking about that, though, because sometimes worship songs themselves can be sad, right? There's a time for reflection, confession, repentance, right? But what if that's all the time? What if it's like that is your zone? Like, I only am sad before the Lord. So I was thinking about that. Um, what if, now I'm married, okay? So Stacy's my wife. What if every time I talk to her, I'm sad? What if every time I talk about her, I'm sad? That's not good. That's not how it's, that's sad. That's not how it's supposed to be. So, so I think if you're in this zone of sad worship, never praise, think about that and say, Lord, that's not who you are. That's not how our relationship is supposed to work. There's a time to be sad and confess, and then there's a time to come out of that pit and go like, Lord, wow, look, look at who you are. Amen? Okay, good stuff. Uh, so verse 3 says, know that the Lord is God. And then it says, it is he who made us, and we are his. And then you'll notice um, in, in your Bibles, there's like a little asterisk next to the word, that last phrase. And one translation of that is, and not we ourselves. Because sometimes we think we're here, you know, we take credit. I'm here because of me, you know. Well, human beings are here because of, no, God made you, and you didn't make yourself. And, and, and God has a plan for you that's more important than what you think about everything. And so some, I, I feel like it was like this little, like, um, hey, humans, don't take too much credit. Hey, humans, don't think that you are here by chance. Because some people believe that humans are here by chance. And, and I'm looking at you guys. You're a pretty diverse, interesting crowd. And you ain't by chance. God has a purpose for each of you. And it's, it's right there in the psalm. It says, don't think it's about all about you. Interesting, too, um, the more that we become his, the more that you become his, caught up in who he is, the freer you become. The, the more focused on you you are, the less free you are. The more focused on him you are, the more free you become in life and in worship and in prayer and in relationships, right? So drawing closer to him makes us more free, not less. So that's a lie that the enemy has is as you draw closer to God, man, you're going to have all these chains on your life. And it's like, no, it's quite the opposite. As you draw closer to him, the chains drop off, and you're like, whoa, I feel lighter. I am able to be free. Okay, then um, verse 4 is all about thanksgiving. Somebody once said that thanks is the password to heaven. I think that's kind of helpful. I, I think maybe thanks Jesus is the password to heaven. But, but I love this idea of, you know, typing in T-H-A-N-K-S, pew, you know, now I'm spending time with the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And, and so um, the book of James says all good gifts are from above. All good gifts. So wait, I didn't earn any of it? No, you didn't. So what about the good things that happen in my life? They're not circumstantial. All good gifts are from above. So what crazy person wouldn't say thank you and understand where that, where that comes from? Amen. The last verse says through all generations. 
And, and I love this picture leading into what we're going to do uh, with the rest of our morning together. I remember when my generation went to Hume Lake. I remember when I was 13 and I broke my leg and I went to winter camp and with a big old cast. And I'm in the snow and on the ice and trying to make it work. And the rubber things kept slipping. So I literally took the rubber tips off the crutches, put them in my pocket, and I just had sticks. And I'm making my way around Hume Lake. And the Lord met me there. I remember summer camp in high school showing up early for worship. No serious. Showing up early for worship. Like, and we would line up at the door to be front and center for when we're worshiping the Lord because I wanted to be in the very center of what God was going to do that day and I was expecting him to move in my life and my friends were too and we were like, man, I'm, I think we were a little mean because we pushed people out of the way so that we could be first, right? How different it is, you know, some of us are like, oh, Sunday morning, whatever. But there's something about expectation. I'm going to meet with God. He's going to meet with me. Guess what happens when you have that level of expectation. You grow like crazy with Jesus. Amen. You just do. And if you have this really low expectation of, well, let's see if the songs are good today. I know, maybe I'll get a donut and maybe the pastor will preach shorter. <laughs> like, right? So, yeah, your expectations are going to be met for sure. Right? That'll be great. But, but I feel like there's something that happens up at camp where you're looking forward to something a little different. And I remember walking around Hume Lake and making the whole loop a couple times and just feeling like, look at the Lord's creation. And, and the songs from the worship band are ringing in my head and the scriptures that I've been reading and studying are going around and I'm like looking at the mountains and the trees blowing and the, and the beautiful mountain lake and I'm like, Wow, Lord, wow. And, and, and I love how this generation has just come back from the same place that I went as a kid and that the people ahead of me, I mean, it's like they walked into like 80 years of prayer this, that, that last week to spend time with the Lord. And so as I, I, as I reflect on it, I, I feel like I got a taste of God's goodness and I also got a taste of God's greatness at the same time in the same place. And both of them spoke to me in deep ways. So do you know why it's called the great outdoors? Because he is. Because he's so great. And so I love to put my toes in the Pacific Ocean, not tomorrow, but, and, and, and just to realize, like, he's greater than that. And the one who's greater than that cares for me. Amen. The one who's greater than all of that is good to us. So, so in a minute, we're going to hear some stories of God's goodness and his greatness, and I hope you have a sense of expectation that God will speak to you today, right? You ready for that? Ready. And um, I wonder if the video will work. What do you think? We're going to try it. It's working. first time at Hume. Best late week of my life. It's actually really fun. All the stuff we do, all the activities and everything we learn about God. He kind of pulled me back in. I've developed a relationship with God. I'm made for a purpose. He has a purpose for my life. We have to know that we all sin and sin separates us from God. Our only hope is Jesus. And if we put our faith in Jesus, he will deliver us. He will forgive us from all of those things. All of it placed on Jesus. Jesus came back from the dead, giving us freedom from sin and victory over death. Last night, I gave my life to Christ. I found my own faith for the first time. They're understanding the fact that God wants to be personal with us. God is with you no matter what. You can follow God at any time or anywhere. It's never felt more real until now. I think I'm actually going to go down and have that mountaintop experience every day. I'm definitely gonna be focusing more on God. I'm ready to go out and like just tell 
other people about God. I'm gonna be a bold okay, Christian. Okay, let's clap That's for the video that we did get to experience. So we, uh, we've had some technical issues off and on, and uh, at least you got a taste for what Hume Lake looks like, and uh, we'll see if the technical issues come together for the end. Uh, but would you welcome Lucas Johnston, our youth director, as he comes up. <laughs> Look at you with your Hume swag. You like? Okay. Yeah. Looks good. Yeah, this is the... Uh this was the color up at, up at Hume. You'll hear more about that in a little bit. But <laughs> the uh, sunny surfs, um, yeah. I like it's it. It's my favorite team right now. I like it. Yeah. So, so we're going to start at the beginning before camp. So you and I had a conversation. You and I and Rhonda had a conversation over the phone, and we were like, okay, so we're X number of weeks out. Hume Lake costs this much money. Most of our families have this much money. And how are we going to get sign-ups? We're lacking a girls' counselor. What are we going to do about all this stuff? And then what do we do next? We prayed a lot. <clears throat> um, you know, this, this morning, these stories from camp that we're going to share, um, I really felt uh, compelled to lead this off, like Kirk said, with the fact that I was, I was uh, skeptical whether or not camp was even going to happen. I, I really felt so strongly that at this time and season in our church with our youth, that Hume, Hume Lake was, was where we needed to be uh, as a church and as a youth. But that came with some risk. It came with a cost. Um, and, and not too many weeks out from when we were supposed to go to camp, that's when we were kind of having this call. Ron and I were in our living room just saying, it's expensive. We don't have a lot of signups. We don't have a counselor. Mm -hmm. um, so we really need to figure out if we're going to, pivot and do something different or, or really see if God has a plan and a will to make this, make this happen. So we prayed a lot um, and just decided, I think, collectively that this was the place we needed to be. Whoever God chooses to send, however he chooses to provide for us, this is, this is what we're going to do. So um, it was at that point that we really, uh, I, I think I, I stood in front of you all and said, hey, I, I really want this to happen. Can you help? And I think the first miracle of camp was that the overwhelming support, um, I know I shared the last few weeks about um, how much we were able to raise and how it impacted the youth to be able to go. I think I can give some, some real numbers now since uh, we're all family. Um, you know, the camp was, was almost $700 a camper. Uh, we are able, through, through your generosity, anonymous donors, our fundraising, burrito days, car washes, uh, we were able to lower the average cost per camper to $145. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, and I know, I mean, that, that is a significant, to, to be able to send 14, 15 campers up to Hume, uh, including the counselors, uh, the, uh, for, for a literal fraction of the cost was just, just amazing. So that and was... And God provided a counselor, too. Yeah, so um, that, I, Rhonda, you, do you mind coming up and, and sharing this part? I hope I... The, bring Rhonda, you, you need to come up here. <laughs> my lovely wife, Rana. Hey. Hello. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the second miracle was just, uh, one, having Rana's support to even, even pull this together. You were able to make it up there, and I just can't thank you enough for the help and support. All the stuff behind the scenes, packing the truck, setting up the lawn, all the crazy stuff, including finding us a girls' counselor. I was, I was freaking out. We have nine girls going up to camp, which was unprecedented. And we've never had that, I don't think, ever that many. Uh, and of all the years, we have that many uh, girls ready to go to camp. We don't have a girls' counselor. So do you mind sharing a little bit about how we ended up pulling that off? Yeah. Um, so we go up to Hume in June, just the four of us, our family, and um, <clears throat> that's kind of also the catalyst where we kind of didn't want to give up. We just felt like our kids need to come up here, and it just it just has to happen. So I reached out, and you know, there's not a lot of internet service up there either. But one day I had service, and I texted one of my girlfriends over at um, Bethany, one of the moms at Bethany, and I said, you know, just please pray for us. We really want this to happen. Um, I have Charlie with me, so I can't be the counselor, and we kind of need a lot of help on the other end. I need somebody young and fun that would just 
want to do this for free because it's not easy work. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an easy job. And, and anyway, so she just sent out a couple feelers, and just by the grace of God, we ended up with um, <clears throat> a amazing counselor, Paige. Um, she's uh, right, first grade. Right. Yeah, <laughs> we love Paigey. She can't be here today, but she was wonderful, and so she was one of our first grade aides over at Bethany. So. Um, my kids knew her. A lot of the kids knew her from school, so they felt comfortable with her. She was fun, and she won Kanjabi, which is a big. Don't, sorry, don't, don't I know, but yet. it was a big deal. Oh. It was a, okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so she was amazing. So she was great, and um, it was just such a blessing to be able to have somebody up there kind of help lead our girls. Yep. That's younger than me. That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Yeah. It, Thank it, you, Rhonda. Yeah. Oh, one other shout out. So, Rhonda's a nurse. So it's also amazing to have a nurse on your trip with you. So, woo, yeah. woo, woo. And, okay. and hey, before we get to the next story, I want all the campers to come down, if you can. Come on down. Fill up the front row. Come on. We talked about this already. Don't be shy. Yeah. Pretend you're at camp. Sunny surfs. Sunny surfs. Uh, there we go. Fill okay. it in. Fill it in. Awesome. Uh, yeah, we, to, to find somebody that's willing to, to give up a week out of their schedule uh, to counsel um, strangers, you know, I think it's a really a testament to the, the community that we have here uh, in Thousand Oaks, uh, her familiarity, someone that we, we knew. God really provided in that way at a time that we, we really needed it. Yep. So. Talk about girl power. So, girl power. This was my, my second little, little journal entry. Um, before we talk about girl power, I need to talk a little bit about the environment when you first arrive at Hume Lake. Hume Lake takes recreation very, very seriously. Um, we talked a little bit this morning about shouting for praise. I, I was shouting and shouting to, till I had no voice left. Uh, praise and worship is a huge dynamic up there at Hume Lake, as is recreation. So I need to paint a little picture of what, what we experience up there. There are, there are two battling teams when you arrive at Hume Lake, and churches are split up amongst these two rivals. Think of it as the USC and UCLA of, of camp, okay? So on one side, we have the team represented by the Caneo boys, the Sunny Serfs. All right. Yeah. See what we dealt with all week? The ruthlessness of these, these girls. And then our Caneo girls were representing the team called the Tiki Turfs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we battle it out throughout the week. It's, I think it's Hume's goal to, to batter us down. We wake up early. We go to chapel. We go to recreation chapel. After that, we, we engage in feats of strength and competition and all sorts of games for rec points the whole week. Mm -hmm. um, so our girls, I got to say this week, were, were pretty, pretty amazing. I want to bring two girls up in particular. Paige Bennett, come on up. Come on up. <laughs> and Bobby. Bobby, why don't you come on up? <laughs> come on, give them a hand. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So, so during recreation, there is a, a premier event. This is like the track and field of the Olympics. It's an event called Kajabi Can Can. Is anyone familiar? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Few mm -hmm. you got? Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So imagine, if you will, several trash cans and 15 or 16 or so girls surrounding these trash cans, all holding on to these nylon straps, okay? It's essentially a circular tug of war where the goal and the objective is to basically dump your opponent into the trash can. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fair, fair. Okay, all right. So this is like the premier event of camp. So much so that they devote one night out of the whole week for Kajabi finals. So 700 campers, a handful of girls and guys compete individually, and then of those groups, they pick 15 of the best of the best to compete, compete in Kajabi finals. Bobby and Paige were two of our Kaneo finalists for Kajabi finals. So tell me a little bit about how that went. And you want to, no? You just, okay. Paige, was it like, was it what you expected? Um, I never played before, but it was really fun. <laughs> now, now I must say also, Paige was competing in the high school division because we didn't have enough 
middle schoolers to compete. So she made the finals as a junior higher against high school, yeah, nice. high school students up there, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, that was that was pretty incredible. So if you make Kajabi finals, that's like that's like the gold standard of of camp rec. So mm -hmm. props to you guys, congratulations, and I want to give these two these two a hand. Now, their counselor. Paige, who was not able to make it here this morning, she won the whole thing. She won the women's counselor Kajabi finals. So she immediately vaults to the pantheon of greatness. At so Kaneo. number one. Number one. Yeah, it was it was pretty pretty incredible. So good job, you guys. Way to go. All right, you're you're free to take a seat. Uh, <laughs> Rex, incredible. It's exhausting. Um, it's spirited, and um, I, I told the guys we're going to have to have to do this eventually, but um, at the end of camp, they announce the team, the team that won, the team that takes home all the bragging rights, and this year versus the Sunny Surfs and the Tiki Turfs, it, were, it was the girls' Tiki mm -hmm. Turf team mm -hmm. that won the, uh, the camp bragging rights, but... Training for next year starts today, and I'm already, I'm already getting going on that. So I think it's interesting too. I think the deciding factor is often memorizing Bible verses, right? Has almost as many points as beating down your opponent on the field, right? This so, is wow. This is true, Kirk. I I uh, I know this for experience. Back in 1992, they're sick of me telling the story. I was a Hume Lake champion and. It was the Bible verses that yep. put us over the yep. top. That's right. Of all things. So Secret take weapon. Note, next Secret year. weapon. Yeah. Yes, camp was around in 92. The kids were making fun of me about that. Yep. So talk about Rhonda's vision of community. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, come, come on, on up. This, come on up. Give Rhonda a hand again. Uh, uh, I thought this was really important to highlight about, about our week at camp. Um, Camp is, is super wild and active, and rec is a huge part of that. But Rhonda mentioned we, we go up as a family every year just because of how special of a place it is. And uh, we've always set up a little little spot on that lawn while we watch the campers do, do their thing. And Rhonda kind of had a vision of, not kind of had a vision, she definitely had a vision of what she wanted to, to bring up to camp in, in that respect. So I'm going to let you talk a little bit about that. So bringing up to camp means four paddle boards and kayaks and bringing up all our stuff. But um, so, yes, yeah, so we talked about community. Community, that word has kind of been floating around a lot for me this year um, about wanting to be um, <clears throat> in a community and part of a community. And what I've learned throughout this year and praying for that is that we are the community. We're, we're supposed to create the community. And um, so we've talked a lot about that with our kids this year too. You know, um, it's really important when you find that kid or that person sitting alone um, to always include them, to always say yes. It's, it's never, um, no, there's enough people playing or that's never an option, you know, in our household. And, um, <clears throat> and especially at camp, camp is an amazing thing, but you do see a lot of singletons kind of sitting around. and. Camp is long, you're away from home, you miss your family, and that could be torture to some kids just sitting there. And rec is five hours of free time. So that could be torture for a kid who has nobody that reached out to them. Um, and what was so wonderful about our kids, so again, so we sat up, set up on the lawn every day while the kids were at lunch, and we set up all of our kayaks and paddle boards and everything and on our Kaneo um, little pop-up tent, and um, one by one, each of these kids brought somebody every day and brought a new person from a church that had no friends or was sitting there, and every day it was so neat to just see more children that we just <laughs> adopted, and our little, you know, spot on the lawn got bigger and bigger, and, you know, and <clears throat> camp, is, again, is expensive. Renting paddle boards is expensive, so we were just so blessed to be able to have some McKirk stuff and our stuff to just bring there for free, and kids just kept coming up and saying, oh, can we use your paddle boards? Yes, can we use it? Yes, there was, it was always yes. 
And so we just kind of became the tent that everybody knew to come to. We, they can borrow our stuff. They can sit and play with our kids. We also became the first aid tent, which I, you know, <laughs> I felt like the, you know, the loaves and the fishes. I brought this tiny little first aid kit, and that somehow it provided enough yeah. Band-Aids and stuff for the camp. So, you know, <laughs> so we just kind of became the center spot at camp. And our church, which was the smallest church there, ended up, you'll see, I'm praying that the video works. There's a picture at the end of camp of um, us and a couple kids all in a circle on the lawn holding hands. And that was um, our church and all these kids that they brought in and met and allowed them to feel like community. And mm -hmm. it was just so beautiful mm -hmm. to watch. So. Yeah, it's, you know, it's the worst feeling in the world to be lost or feel like you don't have a place, especially at camp, like Rhonda said. And um, we just wanted to create a space, not just for our campers, but but for others who might be uh, might be floating around. And, and that really, it was like, uh, it was magnetic. And to see our kids um, just come together and bring bring kids around from other churches was, was really, uh, was really amazing. And I, I've, I've stressed that with our youth, like never, never turn people away. Imagine someone's experience at camp if they were turned away by another church or we said, no, you, we don't have enough life jackets or you can't use our paddleboard. Um, it it, it oh. just, you, you, a, a small act or a small decision can have a huge impact on a camper up there. Everything's magnified. You're up on a mountain, you're away from home. Um, God moves in amazing ways up there. And the simplest thing that we can do is create a space for those, those kids to hang out. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was it was really an That's amazing awesome. time. So, something I want to mention is that the canopy on one whole side of it says "Welcome Home," and and I think that's beautiful. It's a, a message that God gave for us as a church, but also that it, that message went to Hume Lake of like join our family, which is mm -hmm. so cool. Yeah. So there's a really neat picture that you can't see <laughs> that that we will put on Facebook. This oh hey look at that yeah okay. there we go so there we go. Awesome. That's what it looked like. Awesome. So, it's over there. Oh, uh, that's funny that it's there and yeah. not there. Okay, <laughs> that's cool. Um, <laughs> so a couple, couple really amazing things happened while we're on the line. For one, a few of our boys and girls like absolutely crushed it fishing. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you want to come? Uh, come on up, real quick. Come on, Charlie. You want to talk a little bit? Let's bring Char Charlie oh, yeah. and Alex oh, yeah. up here. I want to. So these two young men, along with several others, were pulling these rainbow trout out of this lake like I've never seen before up at Hume. So what, what were you guys using, Charlie? What, what was your bait of choice up there? Uh, salmon eggs. Salmon eggs, okay. Same as Charlie. Same as Charlie, okay. And, and where was the spot? So we were all kind of hanging out right on the lawn there. So you want to tell them a little bit about where, your, where the hot spots were right, right around camp. What, what was your spot to pull, pull some trout out? Near the, under the bridge. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, right under the bridge. There's a bridge that connects the lawn with our, with our snack shack, so. Same spot? Yeah. All right, now, now what would you say was the biggest, the biggest trout that you caught? You want to give the old, how, how big, about, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's fair. They ever show, show, show these folks yep, over yep. there? Very good. Very yeah, good. yeah, mm -hmm. awesome, awesome. Uh, not only were these guys pulling fish, but Alex, I wanted to just thank you in particular. This guy was, and you, Charlie, baiting hooks for, for kids that had never fished in their life. Can I fish? We had five or six, nine, four or five poles. Um, you never complained. You never hesitated. You were always willing to, to bait the hooks even before kids would show up. You were mm -hmm. taking them to the fishing spot. It really takes a special person to have that much patience and show that much kindness, especially to, to strangers. So I wanted to thank you for that time there on the lawn when you were doing that. So, all right. Awesome. All right, you guys. Um, and, and we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the relationships that we forge. In particular, I want you guys to just keep two things in mind. Morgan Hill Bible Church, okay, they're going to pop up in a little bit. Um, and this girl named Angela, who, who we met, actually Paige, our counselor Paige met, uh, a girl from a church in Bakersfield who um, was new, new to her group, wasn't really connecting with her church at all, um, and we found kind of wandering around camp, and, and Paige befriended her, um, and she spent a lot of days under our tent there on the lawn, mm -hmm. and, and her story is pretty incredible, and we're going to hear more about mm -hmm. that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. 
Talk about trials and uh, victories and Daniel a little bit. Yeah, so <clears throat> camp wasn't just all fun and games and, and hanging out on the lawn. Um, every day we were engaged in just some amazing worship. Uh, and our students heard, uh, they heard stories from the book of Daniel, which were really, really powerful in my opinion. Um, stories about um, an unwavering ability to stand up for what you believe in right? Even, even when times are really, really tough. Uh, a willingness to accept trial uh, by fire in some instances, even if, it says, even if God chooses not to save me from this situation, uh, I'm going to give God the glory and I'm going to go through, I'm going to step into this, this trial. Um, the stories in the book of Daniel about a confidence and a willingness to stand up for what we believe in was reinforced throughout the whole week. Uh, and it was really amazing to see play out. Um, and then towards the later parts of camp, the, the students got to hear about uh, the impact that sin has in all of our life and how that separates us uh, from God, um, the impact that sin has on our daily lives and how, if not for the blood of Christ on the cross, um, we, we've severed that relationship. So the gospel message was, was delivered very, uh, very clearly as well. Um, so these messages, and there was a building of worship that I saw. When, when Kirk and I talked about this, this moment this morning and sharing in particular how, this, how Psalms 100 really has a correlation with what, we, what I personally experienced up there at camp, um, you know, this, the beautiful thing about Psalms is it's, it's like a playbook. It's like a playlist for our lives. Mm -hmm. When you're in your fields and you just want to mope and be sad, there's a psalm for that. When you want to rejoice and praise and celebrate God's goodness, there's a psalm for that. Um, and we experienced that throughout, throughout the week. So, um, but it wasn't without some trials. Um, there, were, there were trials in particular at the, at the very end um, of the week. Um, a few of our campers got really sick. Um, Bella, I don't know if you want to share. I, I'd love for you to share a little bit about that. But um, I want to welcome Bella up to kind of yeah. talk about that. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. So we're kind of winding up camp, right? We're having a good time. And Thursday is kind of a, a pivotal night. We, we, the gospel message is going to be delivered at, at night in chapel. Um, lives are already beginning to be transformed and changed. And lo and behold, Thursday, kind of, kind of late afternoon-ish, um, uh, Bella's starting to not feel so great. And then our girls counselor, Paige is also not feeling so great. So you found yourself in the infirmary yep. overnight, right? So how, how was that personally? What, did, did you have any emotion about that? Were you just too sick to even think about it? Or were you, I'm sure you were a little bummed out. Um, it was kind of a combination. It was like, I was first of all scared because it was like I had never really been that sick away from home or like my parents or anything like that. So I was like a little bit scared and I was just not feeling good. But the part that probably was hard was missing everyone during that, like, special night and that special time when, like, they stood up and, um, like, got to, like, experience what it's like standing up and giving your life to God. Like, especially because my cousin was there with me, and I didn't want to miss that, and I did. Um... But yeah, that's a really special moment, and it was hard to miss that and hard to miss out on some memories, but um, I'm glad it didn't last too long. Mm. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were really, it was tough, and thank God we had Rhonda up there checking in, and the smoothie shop was open, but it was, it was rough. I felt so bad for, for them and, and the girls. You know, to be without a girls' counselor was a big, a big trial. Um, Wait, before you get into that, yeah. just a real quick thing. So Stacy and I were in Dallas for a wedding, and we get a call, hey, your daughter's in the infirmary and sick at camp. And we're like, um, okay. And so look what the Lord did, though. She's, she's in the infirmary with her counselor, like hanging out, being sick together. And then Rhonda's a nurse who's checking in on her. And there's a doctor that we can reach on the phone and talk about how she's doing. And so we're in Dallas praying. And then she recovered in 24 hours and went right back to camp. And it was just this remarkable, like, sad, difficult moment, but God carried us through this difficult time being separated from her, knowing that he's got her. 
And it was just so cool to see God's provision just even in those little details. Yeah, absolutely right on. Um, and I was, I was concerned because now here we are Thursday night. Um, I'm going to jump ahead because I want to save some time for some really, a really awesome part of the night. Uh, we, were, we were without a girls counselor now. Um, I, we didn't have anybody. Hume was like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, very a, a 20-year-old camp staffer was like, yeah, we got it. Don't worry about it. I'm like, oh, my gosh, please, Lord. Like, <laughs> um, please find me a counselor for these girls. And, and I know the girls were a little, little worried, a little apprehensive about who, who's this person. We we're just getting to know each other. We love Paige. Um, so I, I, I mentioned Morgan Hill Bible Church. There was, there was a counselor, a cabin uh, that, that Paige, our counselor, kind of befriended. They were one of the churches that were kind of hanging out with us every day out on the lawn. Uh, our boys shared a uh, split cabin with their boys from their church. Um, and Paige, in her, in her illness in the infirmary, said, hey, there's a church that has two counselors. They're, they're from Morgan Hill. They're sisters. It's worth a shot because Hume's telling us now, sorry, we're all committed. We don't have anybody else to offer you up. So we can sign your kids out, and they can go hang out with Rhonda and the wherever. Or I'm like, no, that's not ideal. Like, we need to find somebody. Um, so during chapel, Thursday night during worship, they tracked down one of these counselors, Monica, from Morgan Hill Bible Church, said, hey, we're, we're really in a bind. We, we need your help. Um, and would you, would you be willing? And we, we didn't even barely get the words out of our mouth. She said, you need a counselor. I'm there. Don't even, don't even worry about it. I'll make sure my things are packed up. Um, I'd be happy to do it. And it, again, it takes a really special person to be willing to leave their cabin, leave their girls on a night that's a pretty pivotal night in camp, uh, and volunteer her, her time and serve to, to, mm -hmm. to take care of our girls. And I, from what I've heard from the girls, she was great, and it was a really, really amazing uh, experience. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge, huge answer to prayer that night. So amazing. thanks, Bella. Yeah. Thanks, Bella. Awesome. Uh, yeah, it was really a pinch. And one of those moments that I just stopped, and I looked up at the stars and said, thank you, God. Like, this, mm -hmm. this is just really, really amazing. Cause, yeah. um, and and uh, the boys that night, I, I made a note to give you guys credit to this night where I'm scrambling around. It was a real trial, I think, more personally for me maybe than the kids, trying to figure out to find a counselor. What am I going to do with the guys? Um, it's a night where the girls really need Paige, and they don't have her. Um, and, and our boys, our Caneo boys after chapel kind of made their way up while I was running around doing some logistical things, made their way to their cabin, and they had their own, own cabin time. When I showed up late, they were all there tucked in and, and waiting for me. So, so that good. just shows some maturity there as well. So, so good. Yep. Um, and a couple of our kids made decisions for the Lord. Yeah, I want right? to welcome Marcella and Paige Bennett up. So <laughs> let's welcome them up. <laughs> Um, I'm going to, I'm going to start with, um, start with Paige. Um, we talked a little bit this morning about expectations and I know on the way up, I was always asking the kids, what do you expect from camp? I don't know. I heard the milkshakes are incredible, but, um, mm -hmm. um, these two made a, made a decision that was transformative, that transformative. That's something that else that we also prayed when mm -hmm. we were raising money and I was asking for your support, pray for safety. Pray for, for a financial help for these kids, but also that lives would be transformed. And Paige, I, I know you and I have had a lot of, lot of conversation, really good, deep conversations about uh, who is God? What does he mean in my life? Uh, uh, just really deep personal questions. And, uh, but you, you felt something different, right, this time up at camp during, during what, what was it exactly that, that you kind of felt on Thursday? Um, well, if you know me, you know I have a lot of questions, and by the last night, I, like, I call everything a coincidence, and by the last night, I was like, all right, this is not a coincidence, and the speaker, he was amazing. He answered questions that I did not know I had. Mm, that's incredible, and I, and I think you mentioned to me, um, we, we've talked about this idea of having to know something for, as fact versus wh what can I accept as feeling? Is feeling okay? Is emotion okay? Is is being spirit-led something that's um, totally okay and, and willing to accept or do, you know, we, we, we had some deep conversations about that. And I, I saw sort of a willingness in you up there to kind of accept, accept that feeling, accept that spirit in that moment. And it was really, it was really incredible to mm -hmm. see. So, um, and you, you decided to stand up that night and, and uh, give your life to the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so let's give her a hand mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. 
Now, Marcella, we've just gotten to know each other the last, you know, last several several weeks. And uh, again, expectations of what what camp. What what did you expect from camp? I know this was your first time up at a at a week long camp. So, what were you expecting to experience up there? Um, I didn't really have any expectations, to be honest. Um, but I just really wanted to make new friends with the girls, and that happened, and I'm really glad for that, and I also wanted um, to, like, grow my relationship with the Lord, so yeah. Awesome, mm-hmm. and, and I've noticed, I noticed little things from all the campers, but the moment we got off the bus at Hume, you had a smile on your face that was like, didn't go away the whole week, and it was really <laughs> amazing to see. Uh, it was amazing to see you, you know, all the girls hanging out, the middle schoolers hanging out with the high schoolers. It was just really beautiful to see our Caneo girls up there um, doing that. But um, but you also were moved pretty significantly on, on Thursday night as well. You and I shared a t- few texts back and forth about Brian's message and the impact that it had on your life. So would you mind sharing that with the group now? Sure. So it was at camp when I knew I wanted to accept Jesus in my life, like for sure. And then from the very first day we got to camp, I just felt an amazing connection with God. Every day at chapel morning and night, wait, every day we had chapel morning and night, and pretty much everything the speaker Brian said really made me think about my life and my life's decision. So I realized that I had to repent, so I had to turn away from the world's sinful ways and turn to God because I wanted to be forgiven. And the good thing is that God has already forgiven all of us for things we did and for things we haven't done. And so on Thursday night, August 10th, I remember the exact time, 7.50 p.m., during evening chapel, the speaker Brian talked about surrendering your life to the Lord, and I already had a feeling in my heart that that was what I wanted to do, and I was ready for that. Mm-hmm. Later in the service, he said something like, if you're ready to accept Christ in your life as your Savior, please stand up. I was a little hesitant to stand up because, if you know me, I'm really shy. (laughs) And standing up right there in front of, like, we were literally in the front row. (laughs) So it was really nerve-wracking. And there was way too many people. So (laughs) there was a lot going on in my head. And something Brian said, he said, God so loved the world, he gave his own. One and only son. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and what he did was incredible. He did for us. And so I stood up not to prove my faith to anybody but for Jesus. I wanted to live my life like Daniel and the Bible did. Remain remain faithful to the living God despite any challenges or changes. And that's why I decided I wanted to be baptized today. Yes. <laughs> I've always believed in God, and he has been part of my life, but not fully a part of my life. And today I fully give all my life to God and Jesus. Mm. Great job. Awesome. Let's give him a hand. Yes. Love it. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. All right. It's, it's incredible. The stories were, were amazing, and you guys were uh, an example of that. So mm-hmm. awesome. Thanks for sharing. Go ahead and have a, have a seat. Um, wow. Yeah, it was, it was an awesome night. So. so tell us about, we're still not on the last night of camp yet. We're not. So no. Tell us about the last night of camp and what happened at Victory Circle. So the last night of camp after chapel, it's, it's a really neat night. Uh, all of us campers go up to 
what's called Victory Circle. It's, it's way up on a hill. It's beautiful. There's old benches. It's kind of like an amphitheater setting out, out in the mountains. Um, fire pits going. And it's just a time for kids to uh, kind of reflect on the past week. We're all exhausted. We're all emotional. Uh, and it's a time for kids to uh, just to share about what had God, God had done in their lives throughout the week. Um, and it used to be, I remember going up to camp, kids would come up one at a time or stand in this amphitheater and share. Uh, but this particular night, they, they just turned all the lights out. So I want you to imagine just really dark up in the mountains. All the lights are turned out, and all you can see is this, uh, this glowing fire pit. Um, and I just had this, this picture uh, as kids one by one started, they just said, whenever you feel compelled, just offer up thanks or praise or, or just anything that's on your heart. And one by one, these, these students, 700 plus of us, you know, thank you, thank you, God. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my pets. Uh, thank you for my self-worth. Uh, thanking, thank you for um, healing my mom. And one by one, all of these deep, meaningful um, thanks of praise started being offered up. And you couldn't really see the kids, like I said. It was just this glowing fire pit. And one by one, as all these voices were, were, were raised in thanks and praise and thanksgiving, um, they all kind of started blending together. And I just had this picture in my mind of this is one fire pit, right, at one camp in one little part of the world. Um, and it was such a beautiful sound. It was so meaningful and deep, and these kids were opening up just um, deep and honest and sincere praise to God. It was just really amazing to hear that, not see them stand up, not make a spectacle out of it, but just in their own way offering up these these uh, thanks and praise and, and prayer requests all at one, all in unison, and just became this this roar of thanks and praise. And uh, we sang a worship song that said, you know, this, this is what freedom looks like. This mm -hmm. is what heaven... Uh, feels like, feels mm -hmm. like uh, we praise you, we praise you. Uh, that's the image that I had of, mm -hmm. of that praise being offered up. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of that time, they, they turned the lights back on and said, okay, we want to quietly dismiss all, all the girls to your part of camp, all the boys, you guys stick around. Um, and I was just kind of off to the side as I was running around that night dealing with all the trials and just feeling like this night could have been, or the night prior when the kids were sick and victory circle that, you know, the enemy could have just used this to distract me and Rhonda and, and torn our group apart. And we don't have a girls counselor and what are we going to do? And uh, we never let it get to that point, which, which was amazing. And I think through, through, through God's grace and his strength, he, he allowed us not to go there. But, um, but this last night, as the lights were turned on and the kids are being dismissed, I'm off in the corner just going, wow, what a, what a great week. Um, Remember Angela? So here comes Angela walking down. Angela from the lawn who you was, adopted. we adopted, who wasn't connecting with her <laughs> church. Um, one of the camp leaders before the kids were dismissed said, you know, Thursday night doesn't have to be your only night to commit to the Lord. If you're ready to do it, you can do it, right? So I'm off in the corner trying to find my boys and figure everything out. And here comes Angela walking down. She's the only girl left behind. All the girls are gone. And she just, like, eyeballs me and makes a beeline towards me. She's like, hi, hi, Mr. Lucas. Um, so if I want to give my life to the Lord, do I, like, just hang out here? Or how does this work? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> uh, she was, like, hanging back because she wanted, she, she was ready to make a commitment. Um, so Angela, Angela and I there at Victory Circle on the stage prayed. I prayed with her. Um, she accepted Christ as her Savior. Um, and then I immediately found a, 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 one of the camp leads, girl leads, and said, this is Angela. We've adopted her. She was one of our lawn buddies. Um, I think at this moment she really needs a girl to talk to and walk her back to her cabin. So um, Courtney, who was one of the, uh, the camp leads up at Hume, um, walked her back to camp. Um, and the next morning, I ran into Courtney and just said, how did it go? Like, how did that walk go back to camp? And she said, oh, she just was filled with joy. She saw you standing there off to the stage um, and just said, I need to go talk to him. I need to, I need to go do it. So nothing's coincidental. Everything has a purpose. The relationships we made up there, these stories of what God did in every one of the youth's lives, the relationships we built up there uh, all had a purpose through the whole week. And I, I just, I came back feeling like, 
we can't just throw a slideshow up and share a couple stories. Like it's it was it's too important for that. So that's right. Um, so that was the last night. Yep. <laughs> So, Lucas, if someone has not been paying attention for the last half hour and someone doubts that God is moving in this generation, what would you say to them? Um, as I said last week, have no doubt. Um, I was, if, if, if I took one thing away, one impression that I had at camp was the, the students' willingness to, to worship and praise um, unashamed. Hmm. It, was, it was real. It was emotional. Um, it was celebratory. We had fun. We were jumping. We were rejoicing. Um, and this message of unwavering strength is something that I think we are all going to need, not just youth, but all of us. We can get ourselves mired in the muck of the world. We can focus on the negative. Um, there's so much to be celebrated in our lives, and there's so much to be confident about. This is why I want to talk about um, you know, discipleship with the youth going forward. Mm -hmm. um, it's time that we turn what God's done in our lives outward, in our communities, at our schools, within our families. Mm -hmm. um, we should be bold and brave enough to do that, not be embarrassed about it. Yeah. Um, and I saw that up at camp, like in spades. It was, it was really cool. So Nice. Would you yeah. praise the Lord? <laughs> so be, before the kids go uh, sit down, let's pray that God would cement what he's done in all of your lives and the other youth who are not here. So, Lord, thank you for all you did at Hume. Thank you for your provision of money and time and health and counselors and connections and family and your word just ringing true. Thank you for the boldness that our students have. And, Lord, we ask that you would cement it into their lives, that the enemy would not be able to steal it, and, Lord, that you would use their lives to influence many around them. And Lord, bless Lucas, bless Rhonda, bless these students, and, and Lord, may their lives just propel your glory in this generation. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. So I want to ask the band to come up, and then uh, we're going to have a baptism in a minute. So if you are getting baptized, join me right over there. Amen. Yeah, you, can, uh, you may have to move to be able to see us if you're out there, so... Just kind of get to where you're in a good vantage point and move forward if you want. But come on over here, Marcella. So she already got to read her, her story about giving her life to Jesus on Thursday night at what time? 7.50. 7.50 p.m. up at Hume Lake. And so uh, tell your uh, spiritual family out here, why do you want to get baptized today? Um, I want to be, get baptized because I just feel like like that, I'll just have like a greater connection with Jesus, and yeah, I don't know how to explain like what I'm feeling, but I think that kind of like summons it up a little. And you knew immediately that you wanted to get baptized, right? Yeah. <laughs> and some more members of her family are going to get baptized shortly, so get ready for that. Uh, so, Marcella, because of your profession of faith in Jesus, because you know he is the Lord of your life and you no longer are, mm -hmm. it's our privilege as your family, uh, Lucas and I, to baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, mm -hmm. so that's Marcella. Now we're going to have Marcelo come in. So would you welcome him as he comes in here? Oh, yeah, you're up. And Edgar, come on down here. So here's a fun story. So about two months ago, Edgar and Maria Lisi were leaving church, and then up on the street somebody said, Hey, Edgar, and then um, and you and your wife were walking around on the street, and then Edgar uh, gave them a tour of our church, and they said, can we see what, what you guys are all about? And so that, that was maybe two months ago. And then God's been working like crazy in your family and in your lives. And then through your daughter going to camp, and right away Edgar's like, hey, if she wants to go to camp, I'll help her. 
And, and so it's been amazing to watch your, uh, your friendship and influence in their lives and your prayers uh, and your prayer as a mom for your husband and your girls. Wow. So how long ago did you get baptized? About a year. Okay, amazing. And so, uh, Marcelo, so when did you give your life to Jesus? Uh, over the, the last few weeks, I just realized that Jesus took control of my life. So now I know he's in charge of it. Mm-hmm. And you were doing some praying yesterday, right? Yes. <laughs> and you know that he is the Lord and you no longer are, right? Yes. How do you know? He's been doing uh, good things in our life uh, for the last few weeks. So uh, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I think we are a blessed family. So I have just to say thank you for you all, Edgar. And... I love it. So I have to tell you something funny, though. We were meeting at Sharky's, just talking about things over lunch. And, and I asked him, you know, so what do you pray about? And he said, well, in, in the morning, I say, Lord Jesus, you know, would you put the right people in our lives and take the wrong people out? And would you, and would you bless our lives? And at the end of the day, Lord Jesus, thank you for today and all that you've done. And I was like, man, I don't got to teach you about prayer. You got, you got it going. So, uh, Marcelo, because of your profession of faith in Jesus, because he is in control of your life and you no longer are, it is our great privilege to baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, now stick around, Dad, because something else good is going to happen. Come on down, Melissa. So when Melissa caught word that some family members were getting baptized, uh, she reached out uh, to me through Mom and Dad last night and said, could I get baptized too? Uh, And then I asked her, why do you want to get baptized? You know, tell me more about that. And she said, well, I feel like I've given, you know, my life to the Lord, but I want to make sure I've given him all of my life. And so, wow, I love the maturity and the wisdom that's in you already. So uh, when did you give your life to Jesus? Uh, any more things you want to tell them? Um, I gave my life to Jesus when I started coming to church and going to the classes. I've really been liking the classes, and then I just decided I wanted to give my life to the Lord. I love it. And what does being baptized today mean to you? Why is it important? It's important to me because I want to be, I want Lord to be in my life and be in charge of my life until I die. (laughs) I love it. Awesome. Well, Melissa, uh, Edgar, you want to come down and be part of this? And dad and sis, you can each put a hand in here when we baptize her too. So, Melissa, because of your profession of faith in Jesus, that he is your Lord, it's our great privilege to baptize you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're not, we're not done yet. All right, come on in here, Avery and Lucas. Well, this is a real blessing and a a treat for me as your dad. Avery, um, when did you accept Jesus as your Savior? Camp, I guess. Up at camp? Awesome. Why do you want to get baptized today? I don't know. I, I kind of just felt like it. Yeah. yeah. I know we've talked about baptism for a while, and uh, I know camp, uh, something happened up there, and uh, 
it's it's uh, my pleasure now because of your expression of your faith and your commitment to live your life for God uh, to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amazing. I told you today would be great, didn't I tell you? Uh, but I feel like w when, when we were sharing um, at the end of the, the camp testimonies, I just, I just felt like the Lord was saying, invite others who need to follow me. And so if the Lord's been speaking to you and calling you, uh, it's not just for kids. It's not just for youth. All generations worship him. All generations are called, the whole world, to praise him. And there are no exceptions. It doesn't matter what your upbringing is. It doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter what you've done. He's powerful enough and loving enough to wipe it out and make you new. And somebody needs to hear that online, too. Um, he's powerful enough to make you new. So if that's you and you need to get things right with him, do it right now. Um, so just pray. And it's simple. I mean, yesterday, Melissa and I prayed over the phone. And it's just very simple to give your life to him. It's a little complicated to follow him for the next 30 years. But it's very simple to give him your life and trust him with it. And so if that's you, just, just pray along with me. Um, and you could do it quietly or out loud. And, and just say, Lord Jesus, I give you my life. And Lord Jesus, I thank you for your love for me. Thank you for coming. Thank you for uh, taking my sin on the cross and, and I ask that you would wipe the sin out of my life, that uh, the things that I've done to hurt you and to hurt myself and to hurt others don't define me. And, and Lord Jesus, I give you my life, and I ask you to be in charge, that you would be the Lord, and I'm no longer the Lord. And I give you the rest of my days, and I ask that you would guide me. I ask that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit so that I have the power to do what you've called me to do and help my life to shine Help my life to be full of praise. Help my life to be full of thankfulness. And, Lord, may I live every day for you from now on. And I ask that in Jesus' name, amen. And so if you prayed that prayer, let somebody know. Let one of us know that are all wet, and, and we would love to help you get started. There are Bibles in the lobby. If you're online, send a, text, uh, send a message, info at caneochurch.com. We would love to get you connected and help you follow the Lord with a family. You can't do this alone. Okay? So how about if we stand up for a benediction? It's kind of fitting with a hurricane, tropical storm coming, to do the benediction from warm water. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance, his glory upon you this week and always. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Be safe out there.